I saw the cordyceps bow, thought it was awesome, and knew it had to be done. Had to make a new build. Worthy of cordyceps. Cordyceps gotta use toxic rain. Keep that nice fungus color. Ooh, that's a nice MTX. It has to be different than the toxic rains they know now. It has to be fast. It has to be able to juiced up wacky maps. Hey everyone, Hoppa Muffin here. I hope you liked the intro and enjoyed the proof of concept of killing those bosses. So this is the Cordyceps Rain, Toxic Rain build. Whenever I saw the Cordyceps MTX come out from GGG, I just, I loved it so much and uh, I just had to play with it and I had to make a build with it. I am going to have two different POBs available. They're both going to be down in the description and they're gonna be in the forum post, which will be posted later today. If you are interested in the build, please, by all means, check it out. If you have questions about it, either comment below or you can comment in the Path of Exile forums. I would love to see if someone else has an idea of how I can improve it as well, that'd be great.
between the jewels and various uniques that we use in the build, it can get quite pricey. I do not recommend it as a league start or a first build of the league for you. But if you really enjoy Toxic Rain and you just got to do it, I do have leveling steps in there and some cheap leveling uniques in there that you could use to level your Scion throughout the acts and maps to get you going. Now the two BOB's differences, one of them is more traditionally focused on evasion and having the max house spell suppression. In POB, it does look like it has a higher effective hit point pool. The second build is more armor based and it does have higher elemental resistances, five to 6% on all of them. It shows a lower effective hit pool on POB. However, I find it actually more comfortable in running the maps and I find its survivability better than the evasion based build. But I have both options there for you, whichever one that you feel matches your playstyle more, you can just pick and go and uh, play through that one. Now first we're going to start off here with the gear. Of course, whenever you start to build, a Quill Rain is going to be the first step. The upgraded bow is going to be something like this, a Thicket Bow. As much attacks per second as you can get. You are going to want the Chaos Damage over time, the Damage over time multiplier, and the Chaos Damage over time multiplier. Along with plus three levels to Socketed Bow Gem. That is going to give your Toxic Rain a significant boost. If you are still using the Quill Rain, that's okay. The build can do quite well on Quill Rain, but if you're trying to optimize, you are going to want to upgrade the bow eventually. Now the Quiver that we have, the damage over time multiplier with attack skills and chaos damage over time multiplier with attack skills. The other parts of this Quiver, the life, gain life, for enemy killed, and armor, those are all meant to help with our survivability. These quivers really aren't that crazy hard to get. It's easy to craft if you know what you're doing. If you don't, go on to the trade website. It's only a couple of div. Helmet, we have two different versions. One of the versions of the build uses the Devouring Diadem, and you want the attributes unveil with that, so you can get your intelligence high enough to where it needs to be. The other version of the build I'm using a silken hood and I add armor to it. The reason I'm adding armor is one of the masteries that we use on our tree is that if all of our equipment has armor on it, we get plus one to max resistances. But otherwise, we do want to make sure that we get as much life as possible. We want to make sure that we get our mana reservation efficiency and meet our stats. Here's our gloves and our boots. Gloves, of course, you want as much attack speed as you can and life. And then on our boots, we do get our 100% chance to avoid shock, which will give us all of our elemental element immunities. And then we also wanted the increased damage with non foul skills during soul gain prevention. What that means to people who haven't used it before, whenever you use your Val haste, you will then get a 71% increased damage with all non val skills. And that includes our toxic rain. So not only is Val haste helping increase our DPS crazy whenever we're attacking stupid fast, but we're also just doing more damage naturally because of this modifier. Amulet, we have a replica Dragon's Fang Flight. Now the amulet, I did go back and forth a couple times between a couple of them, but I felt that the replica Dragon's Fang's Flight with our Toxic Rain actually ended up helping me the most throughout this build. And then whenever I ended up double corrupting it, getting that determination has increased our effect, it just kind of sealed the deal. These amulets really are not that expensive for Toxic Rain, so if you're able to get a couple of them and then go and just try to double corrupt, that would be magnificent and it would help your build crack crazy. The only other thing other than determination I would really want on the amulet would probably malevolence increase our effect or something that adds attack speed. Now with our rings, we have several different versions here and several different rings that you can use for the build. In the end, on my armor build, I ended up using the two unset rings you see here. Help me get those extra two gem slots that I really needed. 
and making sure I got some of the stats that are on them. The Vermilion Ring, if you're looking just for more health, great choice. The Iolite Ring there increases your chaos damage and attack speed. And then we also have this really inexpensive ring, the Death Rush Amethyst Ring. This thing is like 1C, 2C. From the moment you're able to equip this at level 36 until the moment you can afford a higher crafted ring, this is actually a magnificent ring. The adrenaline really helps with the toxic rain while you're leveling, going through maps, early maps especially. And then recover 4% of life on kill. All those white mobs that you're killing throughout the map, those are just helping you cap your health over and over throughout the map. And then this ring, because it's so inexpensive, it's really easy to go through and try to corrupt and get a nice corruption modifier on there. Body piece here. Okay, so we have two different versions. The evasion based set, I did end up going with the Queen of the Forest. It gives a really high amount of evasion. It gives you all your resistances. It gives you more movement speed because we have so much evasion. And it gives you life. It really kind of just gives you everything you need for this build. And then I was able to get a corrupt, very luckily, that's plus two levels to socketed duration gems. So on the evasion based build that we're using the quill rain, you're able to put toxic rain into the body piece instead of your bow. And that will actually give your toxic rain those two additional levels. For our armor based build, I did end up going with belly of the beasts and that gives us both armor and evasion. It gives us our elemental resistances and gives us that much needed higher life pool. I'm gonna show the jewels in two frames here. First are the unique jewels. Of course, we have our Thread of Hope, very large ring jewel that you can get from Cirrus or on the trade website. Very large ring is generally not too expensive. We have the two Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh, and those are from the Ubers, and we want those to allocate Trickster. Now, allocating Trickster isn't too expensive. These should probably be less than a divine each. The Storm Shroud, which does give us our all elemental ailment immunity. We are then go to the two really expensive ones. One of them is the Impossible Escape, which allows us to allocate passives around the Chaos Inoculation node. You will only need this jewel in the armor based build, not the evasion based build. We have the Watcher's Eye. Now on this Watcher's Eye, I went for three mods that really helped this build. First one with the increased attack speed when you have precision on. We have a precision level one or level three, depending on the build, and we're just using it to get our increased attack speed. We have our damage over time multiplier while affected by malevolence. We'll always have malevolence and damage over time multiplier is always great. And then we have unaffected by bleeding while affected by malevolence. I hate bleeding and I super hate bleeding whenever I'm running really fast. So I wanna make sure that I can't have it to end up just murdering myself just running through the map. Now, if you are on the evasion based build, there are two other jewels that you may end up wanting. One of them is the transcendent mine. So with this jewel and starting as a scion, we have those three jewel sockets right next to our starting point. Two of them, the top two, if you put the Transcendent Mine into, they will give you 15% to damage over time multiplier. That's actually really good, especially since these other jewels are giving you like 14% with really good rolls, but they're also giving you the other things like life and stuff. So you have to weigh whether you just want the 15% damage over time multiplier or the 14 with life and so on. Another expensive one is the unnatural instinct. If put in the right spot, you end up getting a lot of passives. And one thing in this league that I noticed, you can actually allocate the node, give it a tattoo, and then unallocate it. And then unnatural instinct will give you the bonus of the tattoo. So, if you put this in the right spot, you can get additional bonuses from tattoos without allocating those nodes. Now, talking belts, before you have mage blood, you want to use a rare belt that just gives you life, all your resistances, and increased effect of your flasks. Whenever you go and get into your mage blood, 
based on your build, I have different flasks laid out and those are in the POB. The evasion based build, I do use Topaz, Ruby, Sapphire on there so you can have your elemental resistances and you take less damage from those elements. On the armor based build, I have a silver, granite, basalt, and quartz flask. As far as bandits go, you're going to want to kill them all so you can get those two additional skill points. When it comes to pantheons, we have two major choice and two minor choices. As far as major, you either want to get the soul of Lunaris or the soul of Evercali. Now, if you are having a hard time with damage over time effects, you don't have the regen for it, go for the Arakali. If not, go with Lunaris. And for your miners, if you're having a hard time and you do not have poison immune yet, then I would go with Shikari. If you do have poison immune, then I would go with Aberath to help you with the burning ground effects. Now for our ascendancies, I would go towards Berserker first. It gives you nice benefits and getting that extra rage going while you're going through the maps is extremely helpful. And then your next one you're going to go towards is Dead Eye. Once you have both of those, you just put those extra two points in to get some more passive skill points. Now, if you're looking at the evasion based build and the armor based build, we do have two completely different skill trees. I'm not going to go into them too detailed here. I will give you an overview of what they look like, but you really should look at the POB and see where they are going. So the skill tree for the evasion based build does primarily stay here on the right side of the skill tree. And you can see that we only really utilize one of the large cluster jewels and two of the mediums with none of the smalls. For those extra spots, we're just sticking in more of those Viridian jewels that we're seeing on the jewel page that will give your damage over time multiplier, chaos damage over time multiplier, and then increased with either life or attack speed. For the armor based skill tree, you'll see that we split off in two different directions, one of them clearly going into the strength area, one of them going back into the right side of the map, and we go straight for those large cluster jewel slots to utilize as much as we can with both of them. And we only really go up to the top part of the tree through the impossible escape that's over there by chaos inoculation. As far as the gems and links, I am going to split the screen so that everything you see on the left side of the screen is going to be for the evasion based build and everything you see on the right side of your screen is going to be for the armor based build. First we have our toxic rain links. They are very similar. Then we have our movement. Our movement on the evasion based build I have as dash. On the armor based build I do have frost blink as our movement based ability. The auras on both of our builds are actually quite similar. On our evasion based build we have malevolence, determination, grace, and defiance banner. Along with Val haste, we're not using regular haste. On the armor based build we are using Val haste both the regular version and the haste version, Defiance Banner, Malevolence, Determination, Precision, and Vitality. This is what the boot gems look like on my build. The glove gems, you can be a little flexible as where some of them go, but if you have a piece of gear like the body armor or your weapon that have plus two skill levels, make sure you put the appropriate gems in their slots. In the armor base build, we do have Enduring Cry in our helmet. That's because our helmet gives plus one to AOE gems. So we actually have a higher level of Enduring Cry. And that's a wrap for the Cordyceps Rain build. Hopefully you guys like it and some of you can try it out yourselves. Spread the Cordyceps throughout the Atlas. As always, I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch the video. Uh, feel free if you have any more input or questions, leave comments here or in the forum post but please remember to like subscribe and check out my twitch channel thanks so much your absurd defiance ends here hatchling the appointed time is here victory will be ours annihilation
Oh. 